Hello, my name is Andrew, and in this video you're going to see me cook a lot of eggs. This is part of an ongoing series on the channel where I cook a lot of recipes featuring one ingredient. I'm usually making something I've never made before, not always getting it exactly right, but there's something about experiencing the same ingredient over and over again in quick succession that can be very fun and informative. Eggs might be the undisputed champion of versatile ingredients. They can be savory, sweet, or their unique properties can be used to transform other ingredients. Most of the recipes in today's video were recommended to me on my Instagram, where I posed the question, hey, what are your favorite uses for eggs? And I got a tremendous amount of great recommendations. Eggs have so many uses, I couldn't possibly touch on all of them. So these were just a short list of the ones that intrigued me the most. So I've already made all of these dishes and now I'm gonna take you through how those experiences went. The first thing I made was a cheese souffle. And I referenced a recipe from David Leibovitz and his website. So I began by making a roux for the base of the souffle. Flour and butter toasted together and then warm milk whisked into that until thickened. That's then seasoned with ground pepper, cayenne, and grated nutmeg. And then off the heat, I began incorporating egg yolks, which I had previously separated from their whites. And this is really the main reason why I wanted to make a souffle, because the whites and yolks are harnessed for their individual unique attributes. The yolks are very rich. They make this base very creamy and smooth. That mixture then goes into a separate bowl to which I added a generous amount of grated Gruyere as well as some minced chives. So in my stand mixer, I then whisked the egg whites with a pinch of salt until they held soft peaks. A small portion of that was mixed into the souffle base to lighten it. And then the rest was gently folded in so as not to break it. So I have two ramekins, which I had previously buttered and coated the inside with Parmesan cheese. And then I poured the souffle mixture into that, taking care to level off and clean the top. And the recipe also suggested adding some of that reserve grated cheese to the top. And so I decided to do it to only one to see what the difference might be. They didn't come out perfectly beautiful. In fact, they almost reached the top of my oven, which I did not think was possible. And one ruptured out to the side, which was a little bit disastrous. But souffle fall immediately anyway, and you're really intended to eat them right away. I understand some people like a more wet souffle in the center. Mine were about the doneness of like a moist scrambled egg. And I thought that they were so freaking good. Despite there being so much cheese in the mixture, from a texture standpoint, it sort of disappears into the souffle and instead you just have the flavor and scent of cheese throughout the whole thing. It's somewhere between like a moist bread pudding and a perfectly fluffy scrambled egg. But then it also has this baked crust around the exterior that's really great. I'm not really sure I fully understood what a souffle was previously, but the impression I have now is that it's like an egg white casserole. Is that incorrect? I don't know, but it was very tasty. The next thing I made were Mayak eggs, a Korean style of marinated egg. And I referenced a recipe from Sungyong Longest. So I began by soft boiling my eggs. I had six eggs in a pot with vinegar and salt added to it, which are intended to help with the peeling process. Gently boiled mine for about six minutes, after which I put them into a bowl of ice water. In the meantime, I made the marinade, which was soy sauce, some sweet rice syrup, chopped garlic cloves, green onions, green chili, red chili, and sesame seeds. And I tasted this mixture as well as tasting some of the raw chili to make sure it wasn't too hot, or more importantly, that it wasn't a dud chili with no heat. I then peeled my eggs, gently tapping them and then rolling them on my cutting board, peeling away the shell. And then those eggs went into a jar with the marinade. I then waited overnight to try the first ones in a simple bowl of steamed rice. And these were extremely tasty. The marinade has just the right balance of sweet and salt. The yolk texture of a six minute soft boiled egg is one of the best textures in food. Eggs are one of the easiest things you can cook to make a simple meal. But the next best thing is an egg that is already cooked. The next thing I had the good fortune to make in person with my friend Inka. Okay, Inka, thank you for joining me again. Thank you for having me again. Excited this to be <gasps> excited. Excited, yeah. The dessert we're making today is a steamed egg custard. In Hong Kong, we call it dandan or xin lai dandan. Dan is egg 
Oh. And then dan is just, it's, it's not quite steaming. And then xin lai is fresh milk. So to begin, we needed our ingredients at room temp, mm -hmm. right? So starting with just warming the milk in a saucepan, sugar really is just up to your preference. I know you said you didn't like it as sweet, so I think we should do a little less sugar today. So you had the idea of sort of tempering the eggs in room temperature water to just sort of take the refrigerator chill off of them. So it's not that you really want anything hot. We're just taking the chill off of all of exactly. the ingredients. Yes. In a separate bowl, I just crack an egg mm -hmm. and you want to just Really whisk it. You don't want any lumps in this. This is very critical to giving it that sort of silky smooth texture. And then you wanna add the milk in there, whisking again to make sure you don't see any sort of streaks. Something that helps with maintaining that sort of silky texture we're looking for is to run it through a sieve or you know just filter it in some way to get those air bubbles up. If your sieve isn't fine enough, which is in yeah, our my, case. Yeah, my sieve was not fine enough. <laughs> so you had to painstakingly <laughs> scoop the little bubbles off with a spoon. Yes. But it worked. Yeah, it worked. So I mean, like, even if you don't have a sieve, you can still make it happen. Yeah. But you just want like a smooth surface on top and that's ready to go, you know? Yeah. I have sort of like my hacky version of a steamer basket. A and DIY just a big steamer. Pot. Yeah, with a different colander in it. When I told you I was making an egg video, why was it this recipe that you wanted to make? I wanted to make this recipe because growing up in Hong Kong, it was something that is very popular, you know, enjoyed by the locals. It was a big part of our school lunches. I didn't have it as much, my friends loved it, but now it's one of those things that I think about a lot. I miss the texture a lot, and so I wanted to try it and recreate it over here. And the texture was beautiful. The texture was beautiful, you know, that first dip of the spoon, you can almost see it kind of just break gently apart. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. It's pretty incredible what is achieved with just three ingredients and a little bit of temperature. Yeah. Do you like it? I like it a lot, yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. This was really great. I'm glad you enjoyed. Good luck with your other egg recipes. Yes, thank you very much. Mm. The next thing I made was a tortilla española, one of the many excellent ways of consuming eggs with potatoes. And I referenced the technique from the YouTube channel En Casa Contigo, featuring the chef Kike Rodriguez. I began by peeling and slicing my potatoes into semi-thin semi-circles. Then in a frying pan with a generous amount of olive oil, I began cooking those potatoes, but at a relatively low heat. I then thinly sliced one white onion. And once the potatoes had been cooking for a moment, the white onion was also added to the pan. But all the while maintaining a pretty low temperature so that this cooking process really takes around 20 minutes or so. I did have a slight misstep with my stainless steel pan. There was some sticking on the bottom, which inevitably browned, but the potatoes and onions for the tortilla itself, never really took on any significant color. I then strained the potato and onion, saving that olive oil to use later. And then I broke five eggs into a bowl, whisked them together with salt. And then once the potato and onion had cooled enough, I transferred that into the eggs and allowed them to sit for a few minutes together. Then in a hot pan with oil, I poured the mixture and then I was really trying to replicate what I saw Chef Rodriguez do, which was swirl and toss the eggs rapidly when they first came into contact with the heat to allow some of the eggs to set in the center. After a few minutes, I inverted the tortilla onto a plate and then slid it back into the pan with more oil. And this really cooked much faster than I was expecting. You could see my one side was slightly darker than intended, but not really burned or affected the flavor in any way. This is something that I've wanted to make for a long time, but never got around to doing because I thought, how much different can eggs and potatoes really get? But this is actually an incredible example of how changing some of the variables like the temperature at which the onions and potatoes cook can really impact the flavor in a significant way. So you end up with this very evenly tender, subtly sweet, but also with like the perfume of cooked potato. It's a very specific scent that's hard to describe, but it's like, oh, this, is, this tastes like potato. I really enjoyed this. The next thing I made was an egg curry. This is something that I got a lot of recommendations to make in a lot of different styles and variations. The one I ended up making was a Bengali version because it was one of the first ones recommended to me. And I referenced a recipe from the YouTube channel Bong Eats for a Dimer Dalna. The first thing I did was 
boil some eggs. And I ended up cooking mine for about eight minutes before transferring them to ice water and then peeling them. I then punctured the eggs with, I used a little cake tester, and then in a bowl, I seasoned them with salt, turmeric, and chili powder. In the meantime, I peeled and cubed some potato, which I boiled until about just cooked. So then in a pot with mustard oil, I began frying the seasoned eggs. I think I made the mistake of letting them sit at first and I sort of tore off some of the side of the egg, but I tried to just keep moving them until the outside of the egg was evenly crispy. In my cleaned pan with more mustard oil, I began tempering dried chili, bay leaf, cinnamon, cardamom, and cloves, as well as some cumin seeds. I then also had some thinly sliced red onion, added that to the pan as well. That cooks together for a few minutes. I then added some ginger and garlic that I crushed together, fried that for a few minutes longer, and then separately, Recipe asks you to make a paste out of cumin, chili powder, turmeric, coriander, and salt in a little bit of water. That goes into the pan, stirred together until most of the water is evaporated. I then add diced tomatoes and fresh green chili. After a few minutes of cooking that, I added the potatoes, and a minute later, the eggs. I then added some water, simmered everything together for a few minutes, and that was it. The flavor of this dish was incredible. I really love this spicy, aromatic, this floral flavor from the cardamom. Frying the eggs, I think, allows all of the flavors to permeate them a little bit more strongly. It's amazing how many ways there are in the world to combine potatoes and eggs, and they all seem to hit a very similar, satisfying, comforting note. I really love this dish. So good. The last thing I made was oeuf en moret, poached eggs in a red wine sauce. And as soon as I saw the contrast of egg with red wine, I was immediately intrigued and wanted to make this dish. And I referenced a recipe by Graham Kerr, published on the Food Network, as well as the French Cooking Academy YouTube channel for one of the later steps in the recipe, which I'll point out. So I began by making my sauce. I had some thick bacon, which I sliced, and then rendered in a pan, to which I added some shallot, some button mushroom, and crushed garlic. When everything had softened in that bacon fat, I stirred in some flour, which I cooked for a few minutes, and then added the red wine. Allowed it to simmer for a moment before adding beef stock, some herbs, and then that all cooks together for a couple of hours, at which point it's strained, and then I checked it for seasoning salt, a little bit of vinegar if it needs some brightening, not all recipes call for this, and then a few cubes of cold butter for a final touch of velvet. I then prepared the bread by taking a few thick slices and cutting out rounds. In a pan with clarified butter, I added some garlic for flavor and then toasted those rounds. This could be seen as a bit extra, but if you're going to the lengths to make this sauce and finally poach an egg, the crust could be an interfering texture, and plus you can easily repurpose it into breadcrumbs or croutons or something like that. I then prepared the poaching liquid. This is a step where I took a tip from the French Cooking Academy YouTube channel by adding a cup of red wine to the water and vinegar that the egg would be poached in. In some of the classic examples of this dish, the egg is poached entirely in red wine, so this mimics some of that without using quite so much wine. So the recipe also suggests taking an extra step by pricking the base of the egg with a needle. You submerge it in the water for just 10 seconds before taking it out and then gently poaching it the way you normally would. And I think the intention here is to just give it a little extra help in setting the egg in a uniform shape. When I felt my egg was ready, I pulled it out, set it on the toast, poured over the sauce with a final garnish of parsley, which is classic for this dish. The color of the egg is really something. It has a soft pink to it that I kind of associate with macarons, which maybe makes sense because they're also made with egg white. But there's something about that sort of pastel, the darker purple of the sauce, and the shock of yellow yolk that is so cool. Naturally, the flavor of the sauce has a lot of similarities with like a beef stew that's cooked with a lot of red wine, but there's something extra luxurious about a poached egg because it's maximizing texture with flavor. I had a lot of leftover sauce, so I got to enjoy it in a couple of different ways. Like with my favorite way of cooking eggs, which is fried in olive oil, which I ate as a sandwich with the leftover bacon and the leftover cheese from the souffle and the sauce on top. Eggs are the best. <laughs> well, that's how I cooked through a bunch of eggs. 
If you're one of the people who recommended a recipe to me, thank you so much. Your help was invaluable. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching.